Welcome, welcome, welcome to week three of the National Poetry Month Summit. I'm here with Jay Ward. Jay Ward, say hello to the beautiful people. Hello to the beautiful people. <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing today with your writing? Are you still, are you still editing? I'm still editing. Uh, I got a lot, a lot to do, but, um, but it's fun. I, I enjoy the editing process as, as we've talked about before. So, um, so I'll share one of the ones I, I recently worked on, but, um, I think today I'm putting, well, not today, over the course of the next few days, I'm putting together a workshop on how to, how to cross a pantoum and a villanelle um, and why that might be, why that might be effective. I, I think what I'm learning a lot about forms is as I'm breaking them apart is, is what they're really useful for um, in, in telling a story and, and how to, uh, you know, how to bring it back to the story you actually want to tell. Ooh, that's awesome. So when you get that workshop together, please let us know so we can like send it out to the people because that, that sounds awesome. Yeah, yeah. And that's, uh, villanelles are, um, can be intimidating for a lot of people, but they, the effect that they have are, is so amazing. And even spoken word poets, like, even though it's like a, a poetry form on page, a lot of spoken word poets have done villanelles and been very successful with it. Yeah. I think one, one of the, uh, one of the poems that really got me into figuring out how to use form on stage was Sean Patrick Mulroy, who has a, a villanelle. Um, and it's online. I can't remember if it's on button, um, but it's, it's, it's online and it is an amazing poem. Um, I don't know how well it did in that slam, but it's amazing work. Yeah. That's awesome. I'll definitely check that out. If I can find it, I'll send it out in the summer emails. Cool. Definitely. Awesome. Thank you, Jay, for everything that you're doing. Um, and putting together that workshop. I know um, uh, I'm enjoying a lot of the virtual workshops and the, the shows that people are putting on. So I'm, I'm super excited about that. And you have I, one um, today. Yeah, I do. I have one today. I am doing a journey through the senses. I'm leading that workshop. It's at 4 p.m. today. And there's like 30 people signed up. So um, they asked me if I wanted to cap it. And I was like, no, people... People need this right now, so um, I'm excited to do that. My editing, I've actually slacked off. Um, this is the first year where I was like, you know what? I, I am so busy with like people contacting me for virtual shows and for workshops and things like that. I've given myself a lot of space and grace, so I have slacked off on the editing, but I have been writing new poems as well, so I think it's balancing out. Um, so I'm still like participating in the 30 for 30, but I'm allowing myself the freedom to edit or write something new if I want to. So today I'm going to share a new poem that I have. So it's, it's all rough around the edges. So <laughs> That's the best kind. <laughs> yeah. So um, do you want me to go first? This, this I'll, I'll go first. I'll go first. Okay, awesome. Anybody, anybody that was watching last year, uh, the history of me going first is I, I would rather go first and not be embarrassed going second because she'll do something that will just completely drop the mic and then I'll feel like, what am I doing here? So I'll always go first. <laughs> All right. Um, so this poem, um, so this poem is like four years old. The original version I did four years ago as a, as a slam poem. Uh, and I've just been tinkering with it for the last four years. Uh, it eventually became a contrapuntal. Um, and then it is now a contrapuntal in three parts. So if you're not familiar with a contrapuntal, it's a musical term uh, with two melodies playing at once. So uh, in this case, there's three columns in this poem. Uh, I'm gonna read each column individually, but then I'm gonna read across and it will make a new poem. Um, so in this case, it's, it's four poems. Technically, it's up to 10 because the way the columns are, I could read them in any order with each other and it would still make sense. But, uh, so the title is, oh, so this poem is kind of dedicated to Lennon Lacey, who, um, who was a young man that um, was hung here in North Carolina in small town rural North Carolina on a swing set. Um, and it's kind of in his memory. Uh, the poem is called The Field White for Harvest but the neighbors saw nothing. Uh, so again, first column, second column, third column, and then I'll read across. A swing set becoming hair knit holy, blossoming puff white, despite being blown heavenward. A suspended body, again, dark root, never in place, 
southern fruit with seed, quivering stem like a dandelion spreading. A pendulum, creeping vine, jealous stretched, hanging weed, a picked flower, a whisper across a field by careless children. Uh, and then this is all three columns being read across instead of down. A swing set, a suspended body, a pendulum becoming again dark root, creeping vine, hair knit holy, never in place, jealous stretched, blossoming southern fruit, hanging weed, puff white with seed, a picked flower, despite being quivering stem, a whisper blown like a dandelion across a field, heavenward spreading by careless children. Ooh, man, that gave me shivers. Wow. It takes a lot of skill to do that too, to, to separate it in those parts. But like, I think it has like this revving, like the power of it revs, like, you know, to the point where when you get to where you read it across, it's just like the power and the impact of that poem is like amped up. Does that make any sense? Yeah, I appreciate it. Um, Thank you. Yeah, definitely. Beautiful work as always, Jay, and such a, a high craft skill level that you that you showcase in using form in that way. Very, very nice. Yeah, I, I would encourage anybody watching to kind of play with form, uh, even if, um, like most people today, uh, think that they don't like form, that it's too constraining or too restrictive. But I think if you play with it, there's there's a lot of things to take away from it, even if you don't stick to the you know the the basic rules of form there's still stuff to take away from it to, to kind of help your writing. Definitely. There's always tools in there. And like, for me, like I was huge against form for a long time, but that was because I was writing more as a form of like self therapy and I didn't want to be restricted in my words, but there comes a point in your craft where like you really want to learn as many tools as you can. And it's almost like the same with art. Like when you look at Picasso, like Picasso is very like, you know, they're off balance space. There'd be an eye over here, a nose over here. And like he learned, he studied his craft and mastered his craft so that he could break the rules. You know what I mean? And sure. it's the same for poetry. It's the same for music, any art form. Like you learn the rules so you, then you can learn how to break them, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, um, mine, I'm going to read a new one. Um, and it's, very free form <laughs> and uh it's about um it's just about like the quarantine and what's happening right now so um late night poetry doodle yeah, yeah. Up at, like i think it was like 2 a.m or something like that so before the pandemic late at night the truckers would back take the back way to get to 85 when construction slowed them down the semis would fly down the road in front of our house like big shiny tempests with wheels rumbling, compression steam, and magic, like they were hauling ass and thunder. Sometimes if they went over 55 miles per hour, it would rattle our windows like laughter. When I couldn't sleep, they were a comfort. I'd envision all my fears flung out of my head into their back bed to be hauled off somewhere far away. And I'd picture the driver, a scruffy, dirty white boy who still listened to Foreigner and Deep Purple blaring Highway Star on the radio, windows down and his mouse brown hair all in knots like knuckles gripping a wheel. A crooked smile as he sang, nobody gonna take my car, it's gonna break the speed of sound. Ooh, it's a killing machine. It's got everything. As he fled, taking my nightmares with him till the tires tore them apart. I dated a man like that once, a trucker with a crooked smile and mouse brown hair and knots like knuckles. I was the only girl that ever wanted to ride with him, so he let me tag along, and we hauled fancy cars across the southeast when I was off from college. I loved the smell of diesel and metal as I slept in the bunk, could always see the steering wheel. Felt good to sleep in something that had wheels again, reminding me I can leave at any moment but there's no mouse brown haired boy on the road tonight. There's no 70s outdated tape deck blaring ballads about road hunger and wanting to love a woman. There's just silence. While all my fears wreak havoc, scrawling across the still windows, just all of us stuck inside our rooms with all our heavy cargo. Nice. 
nice. I, I, I love how vivid uh, the imagery is there and how we just kind of follow that, that, that picture. I also like how very specific, um, how very specific things feel when you write, like in general, but like from the first line, uh, like before the pandemic, I'm not, I'm not sure what we're gonna talk about, but like those next lines with the trucking is so, is so specific that it immediately puts me in a place and then I can follow the rest of the poem because I'm, I'm in that place. Yeah, that's like one of the things about like atmosphere, like build, building that atmosphere is making sure that you can paint a clear picture in the, the listener's mind. And I've been playing more with that, like usually the first draft, um, I mean, it's specific, but it doesn't get like, you don't know what color the truck is, you know, but you know what color the, the you know, the trucker's hair is, you know, so it's like finding things that are fluff that I can take out and finding things that I could like get even more detailed on. So, yeah. Good work. Good work. Yeah. So um, I've been enjoying people uh, sharing their poetry uh, through the email. Um, I've been loving reading that. So like if you have poems that you have done with the prompts or um, our challenge that we gave out last week, please share it with us because um, we're loving reading those. I've been trying to highlight a few poets in each email so that I could get y'all sharing your work with each other. Um, Jay Ward, do you have a challenge to give them? Yeah, I think, I think so for the month, I think last, last, uh, last week I gave an acrostic challenge. I think, I think since I'm working so much on form, I'm going to give each week a, a challenge on form. So I think, um, Here's what, here's what I want to do. I, if you can write a sonnet and stick as, stick as much as you can to the formalism of it, but if you, if you, if you want to break from the form at any point, you can, but 14 lines. Um, if you want to stick to the rhyming pattern, you can. If, you, if, if that's too much, then, then that's fine. Um, and generally, it's iambic pentameter. If you don't want to stick to that, then try to keep it as close to 10 syllables as possible for each line, 14 lines, right? So write about whatever you want to write about. But at the end, when you, you've written these 14 lines in the sonnet poem, I now want you to go back and pay attention to where you would have expounded more if you could have, where the, where, the, where the form held you back from saying some of the things that you wanted to say. Um, take note of those things. Then go back and take note of the things that you were forced to write that you actually like that were in that form, right? You were constrained to do this and you, you wrote it a certain way and you wouldn't have done that before, but you know what? It's, it's actually kind of cool. Like take note of those two things. Now rewrite the poem and you don't have to stick to any form at all. Um, see what stays, see what's added. Um, I, think, I think what you'll find is the end result will be better than the sonnet was, but also better than it would have been if you wrote it originally as free books. But yeah, that's, that's my challenge today. So start, write a sonnet, and then rewrite the sonnet as free verse. I love that. I think I'm actually going to take you up on that too. I think I'm going to do that. And maybe I could share that next week. Um, but I love that idea of like, okay, here is the form. So you can learn the tool, learn the rules, and then break them. I think that's awesome. So thank you, Jay. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Mm -hmm. um, writers, keep writing. Poets, I love you. We you love you. Do I? You your challenge. Oh, okay. So I'll give a challenge too. So, hmm. I would love for the poets out there to do a zigzag poem. So where you start on the left side and then for each line, you jump down and go across to the right side and then you go back to the left side. So whatever your poem is, it has to do with motion or dodging. Got it. Okay, cool. I'm a visual person, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, All right, so y'all keep writing. You got this. If you need us, reach out. We're here for you, and we're so proud of you. We're on day 15, y'all, halfway through the month. Yeah, yeah, and you can do it. You can make it, and whatever, whatever you make it through on this 30 for 30 is more than you started with um, and is going to propel you and your writing, so congratulations. Keep moving forward. Definitely. Thanks, y'all. Bye.